All right, by request, um, here we have Ultra Filtration, which was requested by Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Um, I'm also going to do one on selective reabsorption, a little video on that. Um, but these things, are, two things are quite big, and there's a lot of um, room for confusion. So I'll separate these into two things. So Ultra Filtration, first of all, which really just refers to filtering of uh, things at a molecular level. So we're filtering out small molecules here rather than, than large things starts at the, the top of the nephron, where if you remember we have this structure called the Bowman's capsule, looks a bit like a cup, and going into the Bowman's capsule we would have um, capillaries, so this network of capillaries, this little tuft of capillaries, which is called the glomerulus, I'm not going to label these bits on here, but the glomerulus is the uh, capillaries, and this is the Bowman's capsule. They're two separate things, although they're often considered together. Uh, blood comes in this direction down what we call the afferent arteriole, and it flows out through the efferent arteriole. E for exit, that's the one that comes out. An arteriole, if you remember, is the blood vessel that links up an artery to a capillary. If you think some artery is about the, the thickness of um, a finger and capillaries extremely thin, just one cell thick. The walls, if you are sending high pressure blood from an artery straight to a capillary, uh, into a capillary, boom, you'd blow it apart. So, arterioles are the, the connecting blood vessels. Because we've gone here from quite a wide diameter, relatively wide diameter, with much thinner diameter um, in the capillary, it increases the pressure. Just like if you put your finger on the end of a tap that's running the water will start squirting out a much higher pressure when you put your finger over the end of it because you've reduced the diameter. Even though the actual flow of water hasn't changed, it comes out at higher pressure because you've um, reduced the diameter. Same idea here, and the fluid is forced out into the lumen, the space, of the uh, Bowman's capsule. Another good word here to use, filtrate, which means the liquid that has been filtered through. Now, that's the basic idea of it, um, there's a few mistakes that people make. Uh, the first one is when we consider what's actually happening um, in these capillaries. Now if you were to look at the capillary, the wall of the capillary is very thin, it's one cell thick, so let's just kind of draw this out. Here are my cells that make up um, the capillary wall and notice that they've got gaps between them, these little windows, these spaces between um, the cells. These are called endothelial cells, so the endothelial cells, the cells that are the lining, the inside lining of the capillary. Um, to give you an idea, a red blood cell, there's a red blood cell, winding its way down the capillary. What this then does is it sits on a membrane called the basement membrane. Now the way to think of membranes is um, perhaps if you think of a piece of uh, bubble wrap. So with bubble wrap you'd have a plastic sheet and then sitting on there you'd have your little uh, bubbles. There we go. So plastic bubble wrap. Notice here, of course, there's little gaps between them as well, just like with our um, endothelial cells here. So this basement membrane is key, because the basement membrane is the bit that's actually going to do the filtering. So we're looking at this section here, we're looking at this inside wall here. The actual Bowman's capsule, the cells that make up this bit here are called podocytes, and they sit on the other side of the membrane. In fact, they, they have their own membrane, um, but it's fused and it's joined with this membrane, so we can just assume it's one. And the podocytes are these little cells, like the ghost from Pac-Man really, isn't it? If you know what Pac-Man is. If you don't, you need to find out. Um, so here they are, there's little podocytes sitting there. They've got these projections, or in the proper name, they're called major processes. It's these bits sticking out, okay? and they're like little finger projections so they sit against this membrane but there are gaps between them so the membrane here which is mainly things like collagen is really just like a, I suppose it's a bit like a mesh a little bit like if you remember cellulose walls from doing um, plant cells 
it's a kind of mesh and it acts as a net or a filter. So do remember this bit, that people seem to think as these little processes, they think that this is where the filtering happens, as if bits get stuck and, and go through. They don't. Why do they have these little bits? Um, well, if these podocytes were flat up against it, okay, so rather than having the processes, they were just flat against the membrane, any fluid that comes through would have to go all the way through um, these cells, and we'd have all kinds of problems with absorption, osmotic problems, and all sorts of stuff. It just makes things um, a little bit more complicated. This is a lot more efficient. Anything that filters through, once it gets through the membrane, can pass through those little gaps and into the lumen of a Bowman's capsule. So that's what's happening. Don't make that mistake and, and think that the podocytes are somehow doing the filtering because they're not. Okay, what actually comes through this mesh? Um, important to remember, 69,000. Um, anything with a rela uh, relative molecular mass of 69,000 or greater does not get through the mesh. Now, to give you an idea of that, um, glucose would have a relative molecular mass of 180. Water would have a relative molecular mass of just 18. A high, uh, water cause H2O, oxygen, relative atomic mass of 16, two hydrogens, both got relative atomic mass of one each, equals 18. If you want to add all the glucose together, c 6 h 12 6 you can, but take my word for it, it's 180. So these small molecules will pass through the mesh, um, whereas any large molecules just can't get through here. Effectively what we're talking about here is proteins. Proteins are the things which particularly have large relative molecular mass. So we wouldn't really expect to see proteins in the urine. We wouldn't expect to see proteins in the filtrate. If we do, it's often a sign that there's been some kind of physical damage or disease in the kidneys. Yes, what if there's any proteins small than that? Will they get through? Yes, you, know, you might find trace amounts. We'll ignore those for the time being. We'll just pretend it doesn't exist to make our life a little bit easier. But yes, it can. So water and glucose can pass through. Anything else we found in the filter? Well, yeah, we find um, individual amino acids, which have got a smaller, uh, smaller relative molecular mass than 69,000. Um, we would also find inorganic ions. So these small molecules, things like sodium, potassium, um, chloride ions and we'd also find the molecule urea. So all this stuff has been filtered through, it's in the filter, it's gone into um, the Bowman's capsule, it's in here. Now, out of these things, we definitely don't want the urea, we want rid of that, so the idea would be that would stay in our filter, it would pass all the way through the kidneys, and it's removed from the body in urea. Out of these other substances, well, we want to keep glucose, um, Glucose isn't regulated in the kidneys, it's of course regulated by um, the pancreas and the interaction of things like insulin and glucagon. Um, yeah, we go through that in another part of the course. Um, amino acids, well, amino acids, again, excess amino acids are removed from the body, but they're not removed from the body in the form of amino acids. Um, they are deaminated in the liver, and that's where we get our urea from. So again, we would actually want these amino acids to stay in the body. Inorganic ions, well, yeah, we, we do want those. Maybe not to excess, if we had too much, we may want rid of them. We certainly want to keep them. And water, well, definitely. If we consider that um, we filter through the kidneys, 125 centimetres cubed um, of fluid per minute. Um, to give you an idea, uh, a standard kind of can of um, fizzy pop without giving a, a trade name away, is what, 330 millilitres. So it's about, you know, just less than half a can of liquid per minute. But it all adds up. So over the course of an entire day, it actually works out at about 180 litres per day of fluid goes through your kidneys. Not to suggest that you've got 180 litres of fluid in your body, it's just that it's running through. Now, if we didn't have a way to maintain that liquid, if it kept, um, if it, we peed it all out, we urinated it, we'd be losing far, far too much water. So the main role of the kidneys 
here, think of it as maintaining water. That's probably the best way to think about it. Yes, I know it filters the blood, gets rid of urea. That's the simplistic way of doing it. It's about osmoregulation. In other words, controlling how much fluid, how much water um, is in the body. Too much, we get rid of the excess. Um, if we've got not enough, we really need to keep hold of it. And we'll come back to the uh, reabsorption of water in another clip. Okay, so the idea in ultrafiltration is we are keeping these molecules, if we can, getting rid of urea. Why are we doing that? Well, we've got to try and reabsorb as much water as we can, and that's when we get to um, selective reabsorption, which we'll come to in the next video.